What's up guys, in this video, what I wanna do is show you how to work through a easy, medium, and hard example of solving a system of equations using the elimination method. Now, sometimes we call it the elimination method, the addition method, because the first step we're going to apply to solve our system of equation is going to be actually adding our two equations up. And our goal that we wanna do is to get a coefficient of one of our variables to be zero. That is going to eliminate that variable because zero times anything is just going to be zero. Now, sometimes when we're adding our two equations, we're gonna get rid of that variable easily. Sometimes it takes a little bit of work and sometimes it takes a lot of work. Hence the easy, medium, hard example of this video. So let's go and take a look at this first example. If I just wanted to go ahead and add these two equations, right? I can basically just give a nice little plus sign here and say, all right, I am going to add them vertically. Make sure that your variables and everything is aligned, right? X is with X's, Y is with Y's, numbers with the numbers. Remember when you're adding variables, you're going to be combining the coefficients. So in this case, we have a one in front of the X. So a one X plus a two X is going to give me a three X. Now in this case, again, remember there is a one in front of this Y. So that's a one times Y and a negative one times Y. So therefore, when I add these up to, together, I'm going to get a zero Y. And again, remember zero times anything is just give me zero. But for accounting purposes on this first example, we'll write it there. Then I'm going to have a five plus four, which is going to be a nine. Now again, remember that's zero. Three X plus zero is just going to be a three X. So I have a three X is going to be equal to a nine. Now to solve for X, I need to go ahead and divide by three on both sides and I get X equals three. But remember, we have two equations and we have two variables. We need to solve for X as well as for Y. So now the next step, once we've combined and eliminated one of the variables, so we could solve for one variable. Now what we need to do is take this equation and plug it back into one of the equations. Now it doesn't matter if it's the top equation or the bottom equation, but sometimes one equation is going to be easier than the other one. And in this example, I kind of feel like it'd be easier to plug in a three into the X of the top equation. So that's what I'm going to do. Now it kind of looks a little messy. So I'm just going to actually rewrite it below. So therefore you can see exactly what I am doing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace the three with the X in this equation. So when I do that, I'm just going to put parentheses around there. You don't really need to show the parentheses. The reason why I'm showing them is that you can see that, oh, all I did was I replaced an X with a three. Now I can just go ahead and use my inverse operations to subtract a three on both sides and I get a Y is equal to two. Therefore, the solution to this system, the values that satisfy both equations at the same time is gonna be when X equals three and Y is equal to two. Okay, now on this next example, if we were to like apply the same operation, we'd say, all right, well, let's just go ahead and add them up and see what happens, right? But there's a problem here because when I add these two equations up, again, everything's aligned vertically. Two X plus four X is six X. Negative three plus a two Y is a negative Y. None of my variables are going to be eliminated. So therefore I need to kind of go back to the drawing board and say, all right, what can I do? The answer to that is actually using a scalar. What we're going to want to do is multiply one of the equations by a number. So therefore we can get one of the coefficients to be exactly the same as one of the other coefficients. Now it doesn't really matter if you want to deal with X's or with Y's, but one thing I kind of instantly notice here is I have a two X and a four X. Well, to go from two to four, all I need to do is multiply by two. But again, remember our goal here is to add our two equations up. So I don't want to add a four X plus a four X. I want to add a negative four X and a four X. So therefore, rather than multiplying the top equation by a positive two, I'm going to multiply this top equation by a negative two. Now, again, this is just going to be my first step. I like to kind of keep everything clean and accounted for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show, all right, I'm going to multiply everything by this equation because whenever you're multiplying an equation by a scalar, you have to make sure you apply distributive property to produce equivalent equations. So I'm going to multiply this negative two times everything on the top, and then I'm just going to rewrite my two equations again. Okay, now you can see we've achieved exactly what I was looking for. I have the exact same coefficients, one being positive and one being negative, right? Negative four and positive four. So therefore, now I can go back to my first step that I did in this first example, and I can now add the two equations. Notice how I didn't do anything in the bottom equation. All I did was I applied this negative two to everything inside the top equation. So now let's go ahead and add everything vertically because they are already aligned. So negative four X plus four X here is just gonna be a zero X, right? So again, for accounting purposes, let's just kind of put it there. So we remember that got eliminated. A six Y plus a two Y is going to be positive eight. 8y. And then here we have a negative 18 plus, right? So you're adding another negative 22. So it's just really important to recognize that we're adding everything vertical. So if you owe me $18 today, and then you owe me $22 tomorrow, then you're now going to owe me a negative $40. So again, we don't really need this zero X here. So I can just kind of forget about it. And I'll just go ahead and divide by an eight on both sides. And therefore I get Y is going to equal a negative five. Now we found our Y. Now we need to be able to solve for the X. And again, all we simply need to do is plug this into one of our equations. It doesn't really matter which equation you want to pick. In this example, you could pick the original equation or one that you used a scalar by. But I think in this example, probably going back to using the top equation actually would be my best bet. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it again and say, all right, but now rather than replacing the X with a three, like I did over here, I'm going to replace my Y with a negative five. And notice though, this time it's being multiplied by a number. So it's really important to kind of recognize we're using our parentheses. And I'll show you why that's so important here in just a second. Because if you don't use parentheses, what would it look like? It would look like a negative three minus five. Negative three minus five is completely different 
different than negative three times negative five, right? So what the parentheses do is that's reminding me, that's telling me I'm, I'm applying multiplication here. It's just very helpful. Again, the more practice, the less likely you are to be making mistakes. But I think it is really just a good, helpful tip to always just kind of keep those parentheses when you're plugging in your values. So now I have a two X negative three times a negative five is going to be a positive 15 equals a nine then I can go ahead and subtract a 15 on both sides. And I get a 2x is now going to equal here a negative 6, divide by 2, divide by 2, and x is going to equal a negative 3. Therefore, the solution to this equation is x equals negative 3, y equals negative 5. Now, in this last example, you can see we kind of have the same issue that we had in the last example. I can't just easily add these two equations up, right? That's going to give me a 7x. That's going to give me a negative 3y. I'm not going to eliminate one of my variables. Furthermore, I can't just simply multiply one equation by a number to easily get the coefficient of the other equation. And what that means is the least common multiplication multiple of your coefficients is not already one of your coefficients. So what we need to be able to do is kind of pick a variable that I want to eliminate and therefore find the least common multiple of those two coefficients. Again, you can literally just pick them randomly and go from there. But if you want a little bit of advice or a trick, what I typically like to do is always look for one that's positive, one that's negative. And you can see here the y, here is a negative coefficient, here's a positive coefficient. I think just sometimes it's easier to multiply by positive numbers. So therefore I can keep this true as a negative and a positive, because I think when you multiply by negative, that just makes you more open to make mistakes or forgetting that you multiply by negative. The other tip that I like to tell my students is when you're multiplying by your scalars, like if you're trying to decide, is it X? Is it Y? Like which one should I choose? If you don't really care about the positives or the negatives, I always like to find the ones that have the smaller least common multiple. Now, sometimes you're going to have problems that have a big common multiple and that can cause like some really big numbers with multiplying. Here, they're pretty similar because the least common multiple, the smallest number that three and four divide into is 12. And again, you can achieve that by just multiplying the three times four to give 12. And the least common multiple of five and two is going to be 10. So it's just a little bit smaller than 12, but you know, it might help us out and make math a little bit easier. So now what I need to do is say, all right, I'm going to eliminate my Y. And that, what that means is I need to multiply by a scalar. That's going to get the same coefficient for both equations. Now, again, we found the smallest number that they both share, that they both divide into the LCM is going to be a 10. Now don't worry about the positive negatives. We already have that kind of taken care of. So what I need to do is say, all right, what scalar, what do I need to multiply here to get this to be a 10? Forget about the negative positives again. I just need to multiply the top equation by two. Well, what about the bottom equation? What do I need to multiply here to get a two Y to be a 10 Y? Well, again, that's going to be a five. Just like over here, I don't want to make too many like lines here, but notice I got to make sure you multiply everything times everything, right? Two times three X, two times negative five, two times negative 13, five times four X, five times two Y, five times zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply that multiplication and then rewrite the new system down below. Okay, now you can see that I applied multiplication. I applied this distributive property correctly, right? And, and again, we have exactly what we're looking for. We have a negative 10y and a positive 10y, right? The same value, one's positive, one negative. So now I can just go ahead and add my two equations up. And when I do that, I'm now going to have a coefficient of zero in for my y variable. I'm also going to over here, going to have a 26x. This is just going to be zero y. So you know what? Let's just make things a little bit easier and let's limit, <laughs> let's just leave it there. And then this is going to be a negative 26. Now I can just divide by 26 on both sides. And therefore I'm going to get x equals a negative one. Now, again, we need to say, what should I plug the negative one into? Should I plug it into the original equations or the ones that were multiplied? It doesn't really matter. Just pick one. Typically, you're going to want to use the original equation. So I'm just going to go back to my top equation. Like a lot of times the X would be a great choice. But in this case, since it's equal to zero, I always like when a variable is already isolated or if there is equal to zero, that's a lot of times just going to be pretty easy math in this case. So what I'll do is I'm just going to take my bottom equation, the original bottom equation, which is a four X plus a two Y equals zero. Now I'm going to replace my X with a negative one. So four times negative one. Notice again how I'm using my parentheses here, right? I don't want to make that mistake. That's going to be a negative four plus a two y is equal zero. Then I can add a four to both sides, and that's going to leave me with a two y is equal to four. And now I can just divide by two on both sides, and I get y equals two. So therefore, for this system, I'm going to have an x equals negative one and y equals two. Hopefully, this video was helpful for you. If you want to see the next video on solving systems, go ahead and check out the next video I have for you here. Or if you want more examples of solving system equations, or do you want to take a look at the notes and resources I offer students inside of my courses, then go and check out the playlist and resources I have for you down below. Cheers.